Perhaps a decade ago, there were these first rumblings of the demise of bee populations across the globe. Uh, it started in America and then moved to China and Tokyo and London and all over. Suddenly, there was this problem of bees simply disappearing. At that same time, I started to close shop at the University of Cape Town. It so happened that I had a good friend there who started with one hive. So we decided this is going to be it. This is going to be one of our hobbies in post-professional life. Virgil was a beekeeper. Pliny was a beekeeper. Sylvia Platt was a beekeeper. Sherlock Holmes was a beekeeper. There are a whole range of people who find that it's a space that makes them comfortable in themselves, uh, restful, peaceful, and that they're intrigued by it, that sense of being connected to nature in that way. Bee-friendly cities, like the European cities, allow people and encourage people to keep bees. But there are very, very strict rules and regulations. You must keep your neighbors safe. You must keep yourself safe by keeping the bees safe. Isn't that beautiful, eh? The bees forage across a huge, huge area. So it's not only about your own garden. It's about a whole area. It's about a whole region that has to become um, pesticide-free, fungicide-free. That's not the case here. Our council workers are not trained to work with bees when they encounter them. Their first instinct is to uh, simply exterminate them. If bees disappear, the entire environment will change. There is no doubt about it. 60% of all our harvests are being pollinated by insects. And those insects are in fact bees. Butterflies and other insects play a small role. Without them, we will simply go into a food scarcity. It's as simple as that.